yo, uh, I just started this, and like for some reason my mic wasn't working, so like this, but it's just take two. Um, yeah, so I just got back from the gym. Um, this isn't gonna be too too long. I just want to rant about this really quick because um, we we've been in a good cycle. I actually finished this about like a week ago, but I, I thought I'd still talk about it because like I, it it still resonated with me, and I think it would be something um that's that's relevant. So um, House of the Dragon. Um, it's basically a uh, spin-off series or um, a prequel to Game of Thrones. And if you guys don't remember Game of Thrones, is that great series on HBO that basically launched HBO to like actually be respected for like shows like for eternity. Um, and I mean, uh, it, it's good. It, it was fucking good. However, um, the the directors got really greedy and they ended up uh, rushing the show. And the last few seasons sucked. Um, I would still recommend watching. Game of Thrones, if you could, because it has some of the best scenes ever in cinema. Uh, I remember, I remember when it first came out. Like, <laughs> it's just so funny looking back because you had all these people that like they, they heard like fantasy politics, and and the first thing they think of is like that's so nerdy. And now, like the the first thing I think of is when people think that, or, like when when I hear that people haven't watched Game of Thrones, it's like, damn, you're really a brickhead, aren't you, dude? <laughs> it's like shit. It's, it's it's just it really is like an an interesting and um probably one of the best tv series that have ever aired um at least for the scenes that are in there it's like it's kind of like what i've heard about the sopranos i haven't finished the sopranos but it's kind of what i've heard about that if it is true where it's like don't get me wrong the ending's bad but that doesn't mean the journey up until then's not warranted and i think the same thing goes here so um anyways without a rant out of the way uh house of the dragon there's been a lot of remakes and sequels to series that kind of been dead and um I, I a lot of it is just marketing um shoot chris stuckman that's his name he i love i love them guy he's amazing at movie reviews i think he's one of the best on youtube but um he discussed that perfectly where basically and i always bring this up um because uh my friends and family have been talking about this multiple times where it's like why are they only making remaking movies right and it's simple it makes money i mean who, who doesn't want money that's it's just it's it's an obvious answer and and it's also where we're looking now I mean, you, you can't put everything on the blame of advertisers because I mean, where are you looking? You're looking at the easiest spot, which is like what's airing on TV. And even then, there's a lot, a lot of really good shows that have come out that are originals that people aren't watching. Like, for example, one movie that I really want to watch, which I might also discuss later, is Barbarian. That, if you guys haven't seen that, amazing horror movie. Check it out. Um, good original. But um, I still like giving these requels a chance because um, there are multiple times when series are redone that are good and people just don't recognize those. Or... or it's funny because those remakes are now seen as like the prime example of that series now. For example, and I like saying this, um, the Dark Knight from Batman. When you think of the Joker, there nine times out of ten, you will think of the Heath Ledger Joker. It's just polls, statistics. It's just it's what people think of. It's it's the most bought Halloween costume for the Joker. So I mean, like, it's just what you think of, and that's because that Batman reinvented really what batman stood for at least in the, in the pop culture like arena right so um i kind of was not looking forward to this um i i, I heard house of the dragon was coming out and um i i had a bad taste in my mouth especially since the last series ended in such a miserable manner and i felt like it was still being milked out for just money and i'm glad to say that's not the case um it is great and I tell you about all those other things because if if I went in without really looking at the like full picture, or at least giving this a chance, I, I, I would have missed out on a lot when it comes to um, personally learning, especially since I am into like um, film and just storytelling in general, you know, acting, directing, all that shit. Um, I would have missed out on a lot that um, taught me uh, how cinematography works, especially like how it's advancing. And, um, I know that's just a really lame answer, but, um, let's get into this. Let's dive into it. So basically, again, it's a spinoff. It, it starts off, um, way before, um, Game of Thrones. Like, I think it's like 200 years beforehand. However, um, it's during the reign of the Targaryens, right? Um, and it, it's, it's like this first season of Game of Thrones, but amplified. So, like... You were constantly seeing the tug of politics back and forth. And there isn't a whole lot of, like, bloodshed. However, when there is blood, it's like, you, you can feel every single calculated step. And it's almost like, 
each word that these people say is a dagger. And I love that. It reminds me of House of Cards. Except in Game of Thrones. I mean, I just that's the best way I can put it. Um, let's go into the actors. Every single one of them are amazing in this. I, I, I never looked at a single one and thought, okay, that was okay. Like, all of them did phenomenal. Um, I heard, I, I saw another review by Charlie, and he talked about how um, there were a few issues with him where it came to, like, age differences, because there's a lot of time gaps. And uh, it's understandable why they do that. Um, this really is a story about um, power and being able to uh, try to delegate that. And if morality is able to overcome um, the sense of desire, right? And uh, it, it's interesting to see how uh, the show takes that on. And I, I like it because it's almost like you can look at these people and none of them feel like they're blank. Like, all of them feel like they're, they're multi-layered. And I hated how some characters in Game of Thrones felt like that. A lot of them were throwaway characters, so that's fine. But even the throwaway character, characters in this, like, you don't get that. You, you just don't. And it feels phenomenal. Um, for example, one of the sons, he's not in it for a long time. Um, and he's probably going to be in it a lot more in the second season. However, because there's, it ended on cliffhanger, so it's going to be a second one. But, um, he is, uh, Aemon Targaryen. And, um, just the time they put into him as a plot device, just, it makes you wish every single show gave this much love and care to a character like this. Um, Granted, this is all, like, based off of, like, George R. R. Martin. So, like, you know, if you're into that more, like, world-building type stuff, you're going to like this. If you want more, like, action-packed, like, high-paced shit, you're not going to get here. So, I mean, uh, it depends what you're looking for. However, um, one thing that I admire, and um, I, I haven't really seen this type of uh, acting in a bit. It could have been the director, but I, I think 100% was the actor that brought this role to life. And it could have been a boring-ass character. It could have been. But um, he did it perfectly, and that was... Uh, Patty Constantine, I think that's how you say it. Basically, he's the king when the series first starts out. Uh, Viserys Targaryen. And oh my god, he did an amazing job. Like, it, it's, it's something that you aspire to. Um, throughout the, the show, he, he is basically getting sicker and sicker and older. And um, he has to find an heir. And um, he has that, but as he has the heir, there's more political tensions because a lot of people don't agree with that. And um, he has to still try and even when he's you know, knowing that he's going to pass, make sure that there isn't going to be um, bloodshed, that there's still going to be order, and um, no matter what happens, order is what matters. It doesn't matter what blood or blah, 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 or blah, blah, blah matters, right? And, and more matters if the morality is there. Um, of course, though, he, he does have some biases, and you'll see that, but um, I love him. I think he's a good character. But I also like, um, there's another character, which is a brother, uh, Damon Targaryen, and um, he is a, he's, does a lot of fucked up shit. Like, he does some really bad shit. But, like, the way that the, um, portray him, it's kind of weird, but it makes you, like, enjoy it. Like, it kind of makes you enjoy, like, seeing his mindset because, um, you can tell that he's kind of getting away with all this shit and it makes you kind of have this feeling of, oh, he's really got power. We're, we're gonna go on a ride. And, um, it's it's a little sickening, but I like the fact there's still some redeemable qualities due to his more selfish manner. Um, and they really amplify that uh, in the series, which I, I enjoy, because you, you could easily set him up just to be a blank slate, and he didn't. Um, at least when you're um, showing this off. The, the, t the ties between all these characters and um, the acting, for what I would say could have been very boring and mediocre, because... When I first saw the, the first season of Game of Thrones, I was like, fuck this shit. I'll be real. It was so fucking boring. The world building was not it for me. And um, I, I didn't get into it, at least until the end of the first episode. And then I was like, okay, I see why I had to watch that. But it was still fucking boring, right? Um, another thing is, like, like, for example, The Godfather. I still love The Godfather. I think it's a great show. It's wonderful. It's one of those things you need to see before you die. But, like, there's moments in it that I think are just boring as shit. You, I, looking back, it's like, yeah, I need to see that. Like, I understand what they put it there. But it's like, did I like it? No. It's fucking boring, dude. <laughs> so, um, that's why House of the Dragon is basically, in my opinion, the best first season, which a lot of people love the first season. That's where, like, prime shit happened. 
of Game of Thrones, except obviously it's not Game of Thrones. It's, it's now like House of the Dragon. So I really am excited to see where this goes because it is going to get more action packed as things go on. However, this is purely going to be like political tension um, that you're going to feel probably within like the first and third season of like Game of Thrones, but like redone in a different time period. And that's amazing because um, it's not like when you're watching this, you don't want a little bit of violence. But um, it's almost like watching, um, shit, what's his name? Give me a second. Well, uh, the guy that did Twilight, or no, Psycho, what's his name? Shit. Um, Psycho director, Alfred Hitchcock. Um, I love the guy. I love the guy. I literally watched multiple documentaries on him. I read multiple books on him. Amazing guy. Um, one of his, one of my favorite owl, like allegories. No, I'm not saying that. No, it's not allegory. But anyways, I'm, I'm over the place. I'm tired. Um, one of his best, um, examples when it comes to filmmaking and how to set up a scene is having a bomb underneath the table and you don't know there's a bomb under, or you don't really want anyone to know there's a bomb underneath the table but you want the audience to know and you don't know when that bomb's gonna go off and because they don't know and you do it gives us voyeuristic empathy and um that's a lot that happens within uh house of dragon that i hope they keep doing because um, a lot of series don't do this voyeuristic empathy anymore. It's more, it's more. Oh, we we know what the audience or the uh, the characters know, and um, a lot of times when you do that, uh, Alfred Hitchcock, Hitchcock was able to pull it off wonderfully because it didn't feel like it was stale or generic. A lot of times now there's not enough like build up, but because House of Dragon and um, George R R Martin does give a lot of times to his build up. I mean, like it takes forever to him, for him to make a book, but because of that, like. There's a reason why there's quality over quantity, right? So, um, with all this going on, I I'm just saying, watch it, immerse yourself. This is one of those things that, um, if you don't even have to see the other Game of Thrones show to enjoy this. This is very, very um, solitude, and I like that. So, um, watch it, if you can. It's one of those things that, if you can get like a thing of popcorn, that's how you're going to want to enjoy it. And then, chill out for an hour and then go back to what you're doing because it's one of those things you really want to sink in and that's how you're going to really get into the dynamics of um what the show really has to offer um it's not one that you're, you're going to just be yelling at the tv and be like yeah 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 it's it, it's um like wine and bread you know so um before we end this i want to do some quick little rundown of like some of the other actors because like the, the actors in this were like phenomenal like i really fucking love the actors in this stuff so, um let, let me find a few others that i really enjoyed um okay fabian frankel i think that's how i say it um he was sir kissed on cole wonderful actor um i liked the way that he pulled together um his character i think the writing kind of like fell apart at some points but i i i truly really do think it's because the book i don't think it's because the director um, I, I could be wrong, but the way that it's like, I just don't see how a director could like screw up that in that manner, right? Unless um, you know, they change the writing in the script that much, but I, I doubt that happened. So, um, actor did a phenomenal job of showing um how trust in an individual can quickly um change into like vicious hatred. So, um, great job there. Um, Otto Hightower, uh, Tower, which is Rias Ithens. I'm probably not saying that right, but um, he's also like. It, there's little tiny semantic errors in the show um, that's really build upon the politics, and he plays upon that perfectly. And I, and I think if you gave that script to another actor, they wouldn't have got it as well. But he he really got into uh, he, he feels like a more respectable little finger if if you know what I'm talking about. So um, that was great. I I love that. Um, another character was Sir Harold Wester Westeros, right? I'm probably saying that wrong, but, um, and that was Graham McTavish. Uh, he was the other night that was, uh, with, uh, Sir Kristen Cole. Um, he's just a badass. I mean, like, I don't know, man. I, I have a feeling that's just how we, like, I feel like he was typecast, but, like, probably for a good reason. Um, and then finally, this is the first time I've ever done, like, I, I mean, I'll be real, dude. I fucking hate child actors. I think child actors are so fucking annoying and blank and just like oh shit we gotta grab another kid you know and i get it like they're young but it's like 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 they don't give a fuck 
you know? So it's just, it, it kind of takes you out of the moment. It's like, okay, okay, this is just a character, right? Um, but this is probably one of the first, like, at least in a while, like, child actors that was fucking good. Like, they were good as shit. Like, um, there, there's a time skip, right? And um, they have to, like, switch out the child actor for, like, you know, an actual older version of them. I didn't like him as much. The, the younger person did better than the older version of them. At least in my opinion, which I thought was fucking hilarious. Um, by the way, I'm talking about Princess Rhea Harris, the basically the, the, the main princess, you know, the main character. Um, if there is anyone, but I, I would say she is, at least in the story. And um, I think it was Millie Alcock. Yeah, Millie Alcock. Oh my god, dude. She did so fucking good. There, there, there's so many moments that I feel like another, like a normal, like, child actor. I'm not sure. How old is she? Let me check. She's, she's fucking... Oh, never mind. She's not, like, young, young. She's not young, young. Never mind. <laughs> I lied. She's, she shows younger, but she's, like, fucking... Like, she's an adult. She's, she's 22. So, by the time of this, she was, what, 21 when she, when this was coming out? So, she's older than me. Damn. Damn, I was ranting. Never mind, I don't give a shit. She still did better than the older version. And that's fucking... Like, I, I applaud that. Like, holy shit, that's hard. That's really fucking hard. So, I um I, I really enjoyed that. And um, I hope there's more people that... Or at least even if there's a director that pulled that off, I, I wish there's more um attention to detail like that. Because I, I do think when it comes to kids, when it comes to, like, younger... um acting or anything in film it should be just as respected um there's a reason why for example we look at pixar like toy story or cars there's a reason why that shit is so respected it's because it's not just oh here's another fucking kid show for like idiot kids it's like no we're going to take this seriously and it's going to be fucking good and guess what it was fucking good so um that's my rant if you can, watch it. It is time-consuming, so if you can't, like, don't, don't, don't like, force yourself. I mean, like, it's, it's good, but, like, it's not, like, holy shit, I'm gonna, like, skip all my fucking duties in my life to watch. Like, no, it's not, it's not, it's not, like, Breaking Bad levels, but it's good. It's very good. Um, before I end it, because I, I, I am ranting here and I don't give a shit, um, there's one scene in particular, um, towards the end. If you're gonna watch this for any of it, for any of it, watch it for that. Um, it involves the king. That's all I'm saying. I'm not going to spoil anything else. It screamed, holy shit, what a fucking badass Giga Chad. And I, and I love moments like this where it's um not completely about, oh, this guy's so strong because they're able to kick ass and shit. Like it's, they're strong because of their morals and values. When you see that in a show and they're able to pull that off, like a... It's fucking badass. It's it's hard though. It's really hard because you have to build up the the value of that character, which um, either you don't have enough time or the audience doesn't buy it. Which, but I thought I think anybody that watches will buy it. Like it, it kind of sends like shivers down my my spine, which I haven't gotten in a while from watching something. So, um, yeah, check it out. That's all I gotta say. Um, I'm gonna take a shower because I'm fucking nasty. And uh, subscribe. Jump down the. The, the, the Discord if you haven't already, and uh, we'll have a stream tonight. Peace.